In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of define and discuss inventory shrinkage. So inventory shrinkage is going to be a term that we use in order to dis define the reduction of inventory, inventory going down, but not for the normal reasons. The normal reasons being we sold it, we sold the inventory. So if the inventory goes down for something other than we sold it, it's going to be shrinkage. Now, we can get into some different components if this is going to be an essay question in order to discuss what uh, what that is. First, we can start to define what would cause that. Why, why, if we didn't sell the inventory, how did the inventory go down? Well, it could have been theft, it could have been spoilage, uh, something got lost somehow, something got broken uh, in terms of inventory, and therefore, the inventory is decreasing for some reason other than sales. We can also talk about how we typically would find out that what that this happened on a perpetual system note that uh, we wouldn't really know that this happened because we'd be recording the inventory as we go uh, when we when we make the sales and we would assume that the other side would be recorded the cost of goods sold so we would be reducing inventory as we sell it so this is going to be a reason that we would still need a physical count so whether we be using a perpetual inventory system or a periodic system we would still need a physical count at some point either daily weekly monthly in order to compare what is in the books in terms of inventory and what we counted inventory to be. And if inventory is less, which typically would be the case because either it would be the same or less most of the time, then I, and unless there was an error in the recording, which we would pick that up as well. But uh, if the inventory is less, then we would say, okay, there's something happened here. The inventory went down, possibly theft or, or spoilage or something like that. And if the amount, uh, is, is not significant, then uh, we'd, we'd probably just write the, the amount off. Then we're going to discuss if it is significant, we do some research obviously and try to figure out what is going on here. Okay, and then we can discuss about how we're going to record this. What are we going to do once uh, this happens? Obviously, we need to make some type of uh, journal entry to one, take the inventory down, and two, record that loss of inventory in some way. So the inventory going down, of course, would be a decrease to the inventory. Inventory is an asset account, therefore has a debit balance. To make it go down, we would do the opposite of a credit. We would credit the inventory, therefore. The other side then, uh, it's gotta go somewhere. Now, if it's if it's a minor amount, we'll, we're typically going to write it off to cost of goods sold, which might seem kind of unusual at the, at the beginning because just by the name of cost of goods sold, uh, we debit the cost of goods sold, which is a debit, but we're, we usually debit it when we make a sale because it's the cost of goods sold. In this case, it's not the cost of goods we lost <laughs> or spoiled or something like that. But if it's immaterial, the reason we're going to do that is because we're, we're going to say that it's it's minor in comparison to um, decision making. And therefore, uh, we're just going to write it off to the typical account that's related to the inventory, that being cost of goods sold. If it's significant in nature, we might write it off uh, in some other way and call it some type of loss uh, of, of inventory and then and maybe have a, maybe even need a footnote in order to basically describe the circumstances there. But typically, if it's just normal kind of spoilage and stuff like that, then we're gonna just write it off to cost of goods sold with the rationale that it's gonna be immaterial to decision making. And so we need to put it to an income statement account, that account, the one related to the inventory of cost of goods sold.